Are you a grower? Are you tired of lugging around too many bottles? Is it too expensive? Is it so confusing? Tired of reading feed charts? Well, guess what? There is an easier way. Introducing the Stash Blend. You can now get your bag of Stash Blend premium additives that you can add to your garden using just about any base nutrients. Go to stashblend.com and get your order today. Thanks to AEC Infinity for sponsoring this episode. They have the best grow tent kits on the market today. You get their ion board LED grow light, their grow tent, their ventilation system, clip-on fan, and their controller 69 to control it all. You also get their fabric pots, a trellis net, plant ties, and trimmers. Definitely a good price for all that you get in the kit. I'll have a link in the description section below so you can learn more about these Grow Tent kits. And the discount code THESTASH15 works on both Amazon and their website, acinfinity.com. We are live. Hey, brother. <laughs> Right oh, man. Denver, man. He just jumped it's in and he's here. Thanks for coming in, bro. Thanks for coming in. Man, Matt, I can THC coming to join us on From the Stash podcast today, brother. How you been? I'm good, man. I'm good. Thanks a lot for having me, boys. Absolutely, dude. Welcome. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Absolute pleasure, man. We love your content. We love you, man. And uh, the things you're doing online right now are incredible. I, I love listening to your conversation, your format, and your videos on point, And you're a huge inspiration, man. Yeah, you were last time too, man. With the um, what were we talking about, like changing countries? Oh yeah, growing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a good episode, man. Yeah, it was really good. I've I've actually done a lot since I moved from Trinidad and Tobago in terms of growing, like learning about new things. But I got to say, you guys are an inspiration as well. You know, I was telling you guys the other day, I was listening back to some of my old videos and I was hearing like the From the Stash homies in the background just because I'm listening to you guys' podcast while I'm doing my garden work, you know? So, um, yeah, shout out to you guys. You guys are a huge inspiration as well. All three of you guys, man. Big up. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate, Appreciate the positive you. words. Yeah, man. It's, it's crazy, you know, one destination that we haven't gotten to of like the meccas of herb has been Colorado. And it's it's like makes sense why that would have been somewhere that you went to. But I I know he's I guess only recently since hanging out with Eric Nugshots and, and Terp Cam has it been knowing what outdoor Cali has really been like. So then I appreciate their Oregon outdoor. I'm like, okay. But what what's the hype in the Colorado scene? What drew what what really drew you out there to make it that that's your destination instead of California or uh, Cali's Michigan. crazy, bro. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that, that's probably the biggest part. Oh, uh, man, but no, I, I love Colorado, bro, and it's one of those places that my girl has been to before, so she's comfortable with that, and strangely enough, when I was going to get engaged, I was thinking of taking my girl out to Colorado to propose, you know, uh, some beautiful mountains, scenery, stuff like that, and I don't mind the snow, but in reality, having lived out there, I, I absolutely love it. The scene is popping, like, it's so many dispensaries, so many options, so they don't, like, price gouge you and stuff like that like some other places but you know it, there's a lot of stuff going on for sure absolutely i think the difference i feel like is colorado has more than just the herb it's the beauty it's the mountains it's, it's the and i hear the people like that's yeah. a big thing too is like the people like you got you know scotty out there with how he's re- literally ready to have us come stay at his crib you spent time with dude haven't you and yeah. Scotty, Scotty. Quite no, yeah. Scotty. Too? yeah yeah uh yeah i linked up with dude a few times as well but dude lives out in canada i think right yeah, bc so yep. Um, he's not always there, but I think it was Scotty all the time. You know, we go out and we have drinks and chicken balls and oh, whatever it's called. Like some some type of ball. Gator balls. That's what it was. Oh. Gator balls. Gator, gator balls, balls in Colorado. Gator, <laughs> gator <laughs> balls. <yeah. laughs> it's not actual gator balls, though, but oh. it's, it's pretty nice. And um, But, yeah, man, I would say also that, you know, just having been out there and been able to link up with some of these people has been really nice, you know, and, and I enjoy that a lot. Yeah, when I went up to Denver, linked up with you earlier this year, man, my yeah. – uh, my fiance had a bachelorette party and I was able, I was like, hit you up. And I'm like, dude, I'm in Denver for a day. Let's link up. And, uh, he hosted me and freaking got so lit, dude. I don't know if it was like <laughs> the elevation. Yeah, Chris like, did get a, pretty high. It was an pretty elevation, high. man. That's definitely impacts you, but. There's less oxygen up there. Right? Yeah. yeah. But, um, wanted to talk to you about the Denver scene, man, because this is, uh, it's where a lot of people started, you know what yeah. I mean? And there's so much to it. Like, I didn't even get a chance to go to a dispensary out there. Oh. How are the dispensaries out there? The dispensaries are good, man. Like I said, there's so many of them. Like, you can find one on every friggin' corner, pretty much, man. And there's a lot of competitions. So you go on Weed Maps, like you were talking about that the other day, and you can find crazy discounts for all kinds of flour. You can get a flour ounces for as little as, like, $56, you know? 
And you can grab an ounce. Yeah. Like, straight up dog trash, horrible, or? It's decent. That's like, but it's popcorn buds. It's not big buds, but it's yeah, popcorn Yeah, but it smokes buds. all right. But it smokes all right, yeah. Wow. It doesn't taste like wow. trash or anything. But you can, have, you can get boof and like big bud boof for like around the same price, but I prefer to go for the popcorn bud smaller and it just tastes a lot better, you know? Man. Is, is there a brand or a farm that you like recommend or anything that you can kind of th- that you usually go after when you're um, shopping at a dispensary? I know you, you're a home grower, so you really don't probably get but there it's often. The trying but different flavors. I'm yeah, so into yeah. that, man. Just I, trying I like different trying stuff. Trying different stuff. And I was actually just talking to Grambo out at, at, at MJ Biz, and you know, Denver's weed season is popping so much because you got so many options. So you yeah. can determine whether I want to go for an ounce of this or go for some gummies or some edibles. And they always got specials on everything. Everything, man, and it's so it's the price is so affordable that I prefer to keep my home grown like in my jars and you know really stretch that out. So if I'm running low, I'm gonna buy some dispo weed and mix that with my home grown, you know, and just stretch out my home because home grown is better than the dispo. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> I, I do the same thing, man. Like sometimes there'll be a certain cultivar that I don't grow that'll be available at a different dispo, and it's stuff that I have that comparable at home, and it's yeah. almost just my filler. Yeah, I'm like I need this, you know me with the blunts. So it's like I just need something to fill it in a little bit, and I got the super terpy add on. Like I was putting tiny little chunks of the sherb cream pie and everybody else's stuff, and everyone's like, "Sure, sure, like, <laughs> yep." If it's got strong enough flavonoid and terps, it'll overpower the bland, more a little bit more bland stuff. But yeah. then the the thing I feel like is crazy too is like that home grow market. I'd have people here in Michigan who'd be like, "This is Colorado herb, or this is Cali herb," and it seems like since everybody's grown. People aren't so like, I need to go and get it from those places, and yeah. I need to get it there. Now it seems like the competitive edge definitely is the availability and price. Yeah. That seems like the market shifted. But again, I, it sucks for the grows. It sucks for the, the businesses. But I'm always happy that the end user who yeah. wins, like, they get what they want. They get some pretty decent, if not fire, for a real affordable price. And that's, when you look at, like, Las Vegas prices, man, like, 45 for some average yeah. for an eighth. Yeah. And that's that's highway robbery. And, like, you got medical patients now who don't – the card's not valid at different places because they don't keep their medical uh, license for the dispensary. They're going for medical only, and they're paying 45 to 50 for an eighth. Like, that's that's highway robbery. That's medicine. Like, that should literally be illegal. Yeah. But we've got this – the influx of the competition with the supply and demand. I don't think it's met, like, places in Colorado, California, even Michigan, where we consume a lot. That's our primary choice of substance, we'll say. And it's more of a thing that that competition has rised higher and it's made it so all the consumers now we benefit. There's just dank available Yeah. whenever we're in between. You know? Yeah, it's great for the end user. And don't get me wrong, like little mom and pop shops and stuff like that, sometimes they're suffering trying to keep up with the competition because they can't offer those prices. And you'll still find like $100 ounces, $200 ounces and stuff like that. Like, but... You know, it all depends on who's willing to pay for that. People still come in and ask for the highest THC strain, you know, whatever sounds popping, strain of the day, that that type of stuff. But, you know, you can definitely find deals as well, you know. And I, I do agree, though, that some people are suffering and Big Corp does come in and try to take over sometimes. You just got to be mindful of that stuff. But Colorado's really progressive in that sense, you know. Like, they really try to, like, you know, let people do stuff on their own. They even, like, legalize mushrooms. So a lot of people are growing mushrooms and stuff at home. I haven't gotten into that just yet, but probably something I will do at some point. So a lot of people, I think, they're able to just do stuff at home, and that helps out a lot. Because other states, they only want you to go to dispos, licensed places to buy. You can't grow anything at home. And that's a big, like, I think that's a big tragedy, man, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like that. That's the thing is the homegrown markets, they say suffer in some places, but I don't feel that in Michigan. I feel like, again, it sucks for the entrepreneurs yeah. who are trying to have a little something, but the availability of having to compete makes it so now I'm able to go to the homie and I'm like, bro, like, give exactly. me a fair, fair deal. And at the same time, the quality, though, way better. I, and they don't have to deal with as much of the legal mumbo jumbo of, of trying to get it onto the market exactly and no matter how you look at it like somebody's going to be losing right if your home growers can grow home growers going to be happy but company is going to be upset if home growers can't grow then home growers going to be upset but the company's going to be happy because you have to come by them so at the end of the day someone's always going to feel left out or a little bit upset but it'll, it's all about what works for us what works for you right it comes out of greed most of the time. Yeah, yeah exactly. So it, it can work out for in both cases. Yeah. But everybody wants the full pie rather than trying to split the pie. Yeah. To ensure, you know, exactly. the best in, best for all, the whole industry in each sector. Um, when it comes to the, uh, the the Colorado scene, Denver in particular. Denver, right? Yeah, yeah Denver. When it, 
Would you still would you would you say that the legal market? What are the which of the two is doing better, the legal or the legacy market, if you will? Uh, I would probably say legal, man. Just off from what I can see and stuff like that, because like you can go into any dispo, and every time I go to the dispo, there's always people in there before me. They're like, just have a seat in the waiting room, and you know, you sit down in the waiting room, you wait for a couple minutes, and then they they handle you after that. But like a lot of there are just so many options, man. So I I don't know how many people will be making and if they are but what i would say is that certain connoisseurs like you know rob my homie rob is a snob just like me so a lot of people out there they want that homegrown so i was talking to my homie chris who lives out in denver he stay out in denver and he's like man i'm gonna have to hit up hot, hot rod and go and cop some of that homegrown because hot rod has got that homegrown for sale and that homegrown is you know better than the the dispo stuff the dispo stuff is often dry colorado crumble because the humidity is super <laughs> low so you grab it and you like sc- crumble it up like that you get that colorado crumble that's literally what they call it you know and yeah man i prefer the homegrown so some people would probably seek out that homegrown if they got a homegrown homie but i think that's just a little bit of difference so people are probably selling their homegrown stuff rather than just flipping dispo weed you get me yeah. yeah, I was going to say, what's the laws these days for, uh, is it six plants, rec, 21 plus? Or I like think what? it's eight, 21 eight. plus, okay. um, and you can only have three or four in flower at a, at a time or something like that. Oh, okay. And then what about the medical side? Do they, can you grow I'm not more sure with on medical? The med- I'm not sure on the medical mm-hmm. side, but it may be more. I, I can't say for certain. I know, I, okay. I know Canada took a lot of Colorado's um, lead on the medical, and th- there isn't a limit. On medical okay. in Canada, anyways. Yeah. So I I can't speak for Colorado, but I'm I'd assume it's it would be really tough to try to regulate that. Yeah, plant count police. Well, that's another thing I wanted to bring up is I heard back like years ago that home growers were getting uh, busted for that. I didn't. Were they like going after people for that or, or any uh, idea on that? I'm I'm not too sure if they were doing that like and how they were doing it like then I flying over the helicopter, no, no. Map, or, <laughs> you know, like see what's inside the house. So increasing consumption of electricity and stuff like that. But I I, I really don't know. I, I what I say is that it seems pretty chill because a lot of growers that I've spoken to, you know, I don't want to call any names or anything like getting anyone in trouble. But it doesn't always seem like people have only three plants in flower, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah. Allegedly, <laughs> yeah. Well, I want that job though. Whoever's the walking up, police, the plant, the plant count counter. Police. Yeah, I want to be the PCP, bro. Yeah, the PCP, Dude, the, the PCP. plant <laughs> counter police. Yeah. Now, yeah. now with the the like the legacy market, the homegrown market, is it like flourishing in terms of like grow stores and stuff still out there? Because yeah, Michigan, they, they shut stores, down. Yeah, we still got some grow stores. Like shout out to Cultivate. Shout out to you know a lot of the grow stores out there. Like uh, Jeremy Builder Soil, he's out there in Colorado too. But oh, it is that. a little bit more difficult, he's on the West you know, Coast. for some of them just to build that name. Like Jeremy's doing real great. He's got the YouTube channel so he can build his presence. But smaller, you know, grow stores don't necessarily have that. So like Cultivate, a great grow store, but they don't have like a massive following like Jeremy. But they still throw shows and still throw events and seeds, uh, seeds, you know, community things for the community and stuff like that. And I think that's great. Um, so it's all about how I think you position yourself. Yeah, and I think the, the, the difference with a lot of these places, too, is the direct-to-customer thing. I forgot who we were just talking to about that today, but I don't know, I totally got faded on it. But essentially, the grocery stores were the place where you go to congregate to get information. Exactly. And now information is online. Royal Gold. Yeah, Royal Gold. Oh, yeah, yeah, Royal Gold. Shout out to Ma- Royal, Ma- yeah, Maxwell yeah. Royal Gold. Hey. Yeah, big up. Um, but basically, like, at this point, the hot thing, the proprietary thing, wasn't the price there or the accessibility. It was the fact that you'd go get your information from there. Yeah. You'd have the people that you'd go for consultation for free with Shop Talk. You'd yeah. be like, yeah, so I'm thinking about getting this light. What do you think? And be like, ah, probably get this other one instead. Or, you know, this, I'd recommend this. And, like, what kind of plans? I mean, what kind of nutrients you running? Like, those, those are your consultants, essentially. You know, yeah. and now... In Michigan, we don't have that so much, so it's gone. But I feel like Colorado's got such a tight grow community that they've been able to keep it alive. Michigan's a lot of of home growers who are self like I would say self sufficient in a negative way, but like they're gonna figure out an alternative to yeah. make it more affordable. We've got a lot of like local do it yourself dudes. You know? Yeah, yeah, I got to in that for sure, and I feel like that's just the way that a lot of people are probably moving towards. You know, because like. Getting shit online is getting more expensive. You want to be a little bit more recycle, you know, oriented, self-sustainable and shit like that. So people are trying to DIY a lot of things. And there's no problem with that, you know. Like shipping, 
soil or shipping your favorite stuff from build a soil from Colorado could cost a lot. Like you gotta like pallet that shit and some stuff like that yeah. sometimes. So you gotta be mindful. And if you can, you know, cut costs somewhere but still fi- end up with fi- fire flower, then why not do it? Yeah, and I think that's where like I always feel a little guilt being the content creator who's like, hey, looking to get something, go to AZ Infinity and you know, don't go and waste money on these things. Go organic and make yeah. it easy and self sufficient. And we're literally like stabbing the energy that's left in the gross stores. No, on that, on that <laughs> note, the though, holes. What, what oh, I would geez. say though is that like, you know, that people always say like you don't need like these fancy stuff to grow. You don't need that. You don't need this. You don't need but like at the end of the day, you wanna, you know, increase your efficiency in the grow room, bro. You don't want to be in there every day and having to do things the hard way. Like, yeah, your plants will grow if you leave in a grow. They've been doing that for millennium, bro, centuries. But you want to be able to, like, optimize your grow setup, get the best out of it. So, like, why not go for that nice, fancy light? Why not grab that Evo light from Mars or whatever the case may be? Like, at the end of the day, it like, you really just want to get something that levels up your grow. And AC does a great job with that, you know? So having that all, all-in-one environmental kit... That will take a lot of problems out you grow. Let the plants grow, sure, but then you end up with some sort of issue where your RH goes up, you get bud rot, you get some sort of mold in your grow. That leads to pests, and now you're fighting a, a downhill battle, you know, uphill battle, trying to figure out what the hell am I going to do? How am I going to, you know, recover my flower? Your flower's gone, you wasted all that time and money. And now the DIY thing you try to do has now set you back like five steps back. Yeah, You yeah. didn't even get your harvest. You can't taste your flower. You can't get it. you, you got to go and hit the disc ball, hit up the shady guy in the corner. Yep. And that's I think that's yeah. the the give and take and why a lot of grow stores stay open with the passionate places because you have the hobbyists who want to do more, yeah. want to buy these things. It's just like people who are the home brewers, like they want all the cool new tinkering thing to make it even better. You know, us as content creators, we get extra camera, extra light. Let's, yeah, we could just slap a phone and make it work, but we want to perfect our craft. We want to make it more exactly. efficient. We want to do better and level up. Like it's what you you do as a as a real passionate grower. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I can stick a seed in the soil and wait for it to pop. Or, you know, I can try to accelerate the process, you know, and, and why not accelerate the process, cut down time on my grow? You know, I can let the plants just go grow under the sunlight outside. If I'm growing outdoors, I can do that. But why not have it inside in, under 24 hours, 18 hours of light, get the mess out of that auto? I want the best for my plants, bro. Why yeah. wouldn't I? Yeah. yeah. Now, growing in Colorado, uh, the conditions are you know, different from some other areas. And I think a lot of people are surprised at the winter conditions that I know of. Can you talk about <laughs> Colorado's conditions, like in controlling your grow environment? Yeah, it's uh, it's an uphill battle out there in Colorado because it's just super dry, super harsh climate, and it's yeah. pretty cold. You know, on one side of the road, it can be like super warm, super hot, and you're looking outside your neighbor and his house is covered in snow. <laughs> you know, so it, it's like all about which side of the house you land on kind of. So, but other than that, it's really really low humidity so you really need to like get that hard age up especially in your grow room i found that drying flower you know it can over dry really easily so i put it in a super small tent um and it's really just managing the environment because the biggest thing for me was the change from coming from the caribbean super moist climate humid warm all the time ain't got no winters it's like 24 7 summer bro like straight up and then i fly out to colorado and you know you got winter most of the year it's cold it's super dry like if you ain't from out there, you gotta bring your lip your lip balm and <laughs> like that, bro. So that's just dude, like when we go to Vegas. Yeah, anytime in Vegas. Luckily, uh, with MJ Bizcon this yeah. year, they had chapstick all over the place. Instead got, of candy, there was chapstick yeah, all over. Shout the out place. to Bovida. <laughs> shout out to Bovida. Yeah, shout out, we got it right hey, here. Man. <laughs> but like that's where it's like the the different environments. It seems like yeah, you've got different grow things and everything like that. But the dank, somebody has the dank. Yeah. And like well, as soon as we got out here, I hit up one of the homies that I know. I'm like. I need what you have because I just know <laughs> there's a difference in just the local mainstream stuff yeah. versus the local underground scene, so to speak. And, yeah. and like when you first moved out there, like it was just all dispo. I assume you didn't really have a plug. All you dispo have. had no plug, and I wasn't growing anything yet. I actually started. I want. I was so like thirsty to start my grow, bro. I, before I even had a spot, I started off in my Airbnb. So like this, I grabbed some pots, I set up a little <laughs> light, bro, and we had it somewhere in the bathroom, like hiding. And every time my, my Airbnb person would come in, I have to like sh- shut the door and hide that. <laughs> I literally started off some autos in a little pot, you know, and then I moved Dang. it across when I found a spot. So yeah, when I touched down, I didn't have any of that. And again, the environment was like a, a real 
shocker. You know, I had to learn everything that I knew about how to start the beans off, how to take my clones, how to run my plants. I had to like reassess it because now the environment is completely different. You know, so what I thought would work with. does not work anymore. Like even now to this day, bro, I'm still having trouble with like the seedling stage out here in Colorado because of how dry it is. Whereas back in Trinidad and the Caribbean, no problem, bro. I can just pop cuttings in. Those will, those will root. I can just pop my seedling in. That will go through normal. But out here, seedlings are dying like the f apocalypse, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the dryness is... Dryness, is bro. Something you can I, relate to. Eh? Yeah. Something I relate to. And it's, it's really a small climate compared to what a majority of the other of the U.S. is experiencing, right? Yeah. A lot of the U.S. is experiencing high humidity environments, right? There's r real small pockets yeah. that are low humidity, right? Then so I put it into that humidity dome and I get the damping off now because the RH is too high, <laughs> you know? So, like, I got to, like, crack it a little bit and then, like, the RH drops too low. So it's a constant battle, bro. Yeah. Constant battle. Yep. But you end up figuring out humidifiers. I mean, I got like three of them. You know what I mean, dude? Get them all over the place. Literally, yeah. I think that's probably what I'm going to have to do just to get that perfect RH. Do you think you know, humidity is, is humidity your biggest factor when it comes to gardening? Probably right now, yeah. Bigger yeah. than temps, bigger than like anything else, I would say probably the humidity. And other than that, I'll probably say because I'm growing now in cocoa, I know a lot of you guys use cocoa. I'm trying to dial in, like, you know, my CalMag feedings and stuff like that because that, that's been a little bit of an issue. But to remedy that, I've just added a little bit of living soil to my, well, ProMix, shout out to ProMix, to my, uh, my cocoa mix, and that's been helping me, you know, just a little bit. But those yeah. two things, really. I think that's the tough part, too, is, is getting over that hurdle, finding the cultivars that acclimate to that style of, of growth in the environment. Yeah. And then being able to maintain your perpetual grow if you don't have the normal, easy, successful... Exactly. You know, propagation station going on. Like, that's yeah. that's been an issue for me as I transition into winter. It's the best time to grow. But summer, I was having high humidity swings. Yeah. And I was just like, ah, like, I don't want it to get cold. But I'm like, come on, baby, let's dry out a little bit. <laughs> you know, because, like, the garden suffers if you don't have the equipment to take care of it. And it's it's tough because you go from one where it's dehumidifier potentially yeah. to the other that's a humidifier. So it's like you're having, no matter what that cost is there, but it's more equipment you have to like purchase. And now one is irrelevant. You're probably never really going to have to yeah. deal with dehumidifying. You're going to have to deal with humidifying. Exactly. You and know? Like my like cloning process, like propagation, I got no problems with that. That works out, you know, great. I actually got a little shoebox that I made of five bucks cloning you know, station. I think we spoke about that on yeah, Scotty's yeah, yeah, show. Yeah. So that that's no problem. But, like, the biggest thing for me is that I want to find that keeper strain that I want to run. So I was telling you guys that, like, you know, there are a lot of different strains that people like, and not everyone likes the same thing. Some people like different things. And I'm still trying to find those ones, those three or four strains that I want to run for, like, the next few years, bro. And I'm going I'm to be cool with. I can switch those up. And, like, even the JR, Cherry Paloma, shout out to JR, shout out to Cherry Paloma and Raw Genetics. Um, but... That one I, is just not, like, fully to my liking. You know, I thought it was going to be a keeper, and I cloned it, and that's fine. But it's not that one that I want to keep around. So I got to pop some more beans. And that's where the seedling issue comes back in. So I've just been losing a bunch of flowers trying to find that keeper, you know. So when it comes to keepers, for me, right now, I'm running that Slurricane mm -hmm. number 7 and a 1994 Super Skunk Cross. And those two ones, I want to add some more things to those, you know, and, and have a variety of things that I can play around with. I love that, man. It sounds like you and I got a similar similar palette. What are you looking for when it comes to uh, phenotypes, terpenes, characteristics? What speaks to you? Uh, I like a little bit of, you know, gas. Like, I'm a really gassy guy. Not overly sweet. Like, you know, when you smell something, it smells like a bag of cherries. I don't like that. But I like diesel with, like, an after hint of something sweet. That can be really nice. You know, that, that sort of thing. And that's what I'm trying to find. Like, I even popped Bruce Banner from Dark Horse Genetics. That's just so Super dank, super gassy. It smells like fried chicken almost, like just because it's so dank, bro. I need to try that one. I've had other alleged Bruce Banners that were just cardboard. I got this turks. one straight from yeah. Darko. So if you guys want, like, I can send you guys, you know, I can hook you I'll guys up. Boy. Yes, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. Straight from Darko. So I want me some Bruce fried Banner. chicken. Very we cool. were going to have fried chicken again fried today. Chicken. I actually had a form of it. Would have had fried chicken. Yeah, hook you guys up these with these that boys don't eat fried chicken three days in a row. Say nothing. Say nothing. I'm hook you guys up with that fried chicken. Nice. Nice. Now, with the, the pheno hunting and everything there, you, you initially didn't have anyone you could just get clones from, right? Nah. Uh, there wasn't, like, I took the leap when I went to the grocery store, and, like, I would just hang out there, and after, like, my fifth time showing face, I was just like, you know anywhere to get any cuts or any clones or anything? And the dude's like, yeah, actually, I'm, that's what I do. I make them, that's, I don't even barely flower much. I just do in summer, in the summer outside. I don't, in the yeah. winter, it's just propagation. And it was my first run, I was bought one of each of 12. 
So all different cultivars, all were fire. And I thought that was just how it was, is everything <laughs> is fire. And then I went into popping my own beans and it was just, it's, I'm still hunting. I'm <laughs> yeah, literally still hunting. Like I, 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 to this day, to this day, I've yeah. only got a few that I've wanted to keep that I'm like, these are the ones, these this is what I want, you know? It's tough. It's tough. I should have done that though. I didn't think about hanging out by my grocery store. And I, I hit the dispo. They had clones. I was like, how much one of these? 25 bucks. I, I'm going to grab one. You need your Colorado local state ID. I was like, okay, well, I ain't got my local ID yet. So yeah, I yeah, get that. yeah. You know, so that that's what sort of put a span in the works for me. You can buy legal cuts. Yeah, you can buy legal uh-huh. cuts. You can go to the dispo and they they'll sell cuts. And oh, they shit. sell them at the dispo. Okay, yeah, they yeah. sell them at the dispo. We don't Once have that yet. We don't have that. No, yeah. yeah, I think honestly, like the biggest thing is it's one of those situations where it's like, why am I going to give them the ability to not come back? Yeah, but, dude. <laughs> you know what I'm like that's my thought process because most people don't smoke like like some of us, and so it's like. <laughs> and she cuts you again never <laughs> yeah it's like you instead of selling them fish you're going to teach them to get their own and i love that i love that i really do i think it's awesome it's just it's a unique business practice somebody else uh, told me they're like oh get your books and dispensaries i'm like i'm not gonna put my book on yeah. how to grow in dispensaries so you yeah. can they won't come back and just grow your own <laughs> yeah yeah learn how to not come back <laughs> that's the title of it shout out to chris aka mr grow it <laughs> never see a dispensary yeah. again it's like Spen- oh. dispo selling seeds or clones i mean i can see that as some you know some people think that's surprising it doesn't happen in every state you know yeah yeah that's that's that's, 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 that's that's the same argument as if if legal recreate or if recreation comes around then medical will disappear and at least where I'm from, that's, did. that's not the case. Oh, man, it murdered um, where I am. The, yeah, I, I suppose the, the, the ball has been in dropped California. On, the medical, on the medical people. In the States, it's dead. Um, yeah. But, you know, the idea that that you can, you can essentially still get quality product for the right pl- price, and it's covered by your insurance. That's, that, that's way great. unique by your insurance, that's great. too. But, you know, to think, though, that, like, now that we're legal, just recreational is going to go away. Or now that people can grow their own, people were people assumed that dispensaries would die. Yeah. Oh. So pick up my kids. Everybody's going to. Uh, <laughs> we just continue. There's no we'll continue. noise. <laughs> we're, we're we're making it happen. Yeah. I, um, I, yeah I, that, I, that's not the case. Like when when recreational came around or legal dispensaries came around, growers didn't stop growing. Dude, this is what. Oh, you weren't there last night with uh, with North. <laughs> So shout out Northern Scrogger, man. Troy was uh, Big up Troy. basically saying it. They were like, oh, well, you know, why doesn't everybody just grow? I think uh, Heaven was saying. And he's like, oh, because it takes skill and effort. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is true. And it's like, that's what, and that's one thing I said, too. I was like, well, with, you know, the caregiver, the dispensaries are going to die. You know what I'm saying? Or like the caregiver, any sort of thing, just like you said, the cause and effect. The masses don't want to do the work. The masses no. don't want to put in time. And not everybody has no, you don't a have home that, time. that they can grow a plant I can, in. I love drinking a good brew. I don't have time I don't want to, to brew, brew my own. I'm exactly. not stomping yeah. on yeah. grapes. That's a really good wine. analogy. Yeah, yeah. So so there are people don't. I just want to consume. Remember when we were in L.A.? They're like, oh, you're a grower? We were like a rare breed. Yeah, in there, man. We, yep. we became so like royalty. Everybody just consumed, and they were like, oh, I, I would never do that. You know, they were, saw this thing as of growing as something they, they don't think they could ever do in their life, yeah. you know? Yeah, and I think that's the difference is with uh, like thinking, oh, well, giving them the plant, all my customers are gone. That's Honestly, it's another revenue stream. When I was dealing with the, the Frank crew, I was pushing that heavy. I'm like, there's a whole group of people that we can give them the end of life cuts, we'll say. So we're going to quit growing this genetic or we're doing a pheno hunt. And the fifth one is the one that we're finally going to give up. Yeah. Well, all right. Now I'm going to actually just get rid of this. I'm going to put it available for cuts, you know. And so I really feel like you're going to have a lot more people who look at it in the same sense. We're like, give me the option. Give me the option. Dude. We were just talking about an idea that I'm not going to leak out. That was a pretty cool one for just a DIY kit for something on your own. That's like, well, why would I want to give somebody the ability to do that on their own? Well, I'm not always trying to corner the market or be a gatekeeper. We we have we have a, a store in Canada called Canadian Tire. It's kind of like home hardware. Yeah. In terms of like, it's a tool store. Huge, huge in Canada. It's right? huge. Yeah. It's huge, and they have lifetime warranty on their tools. And the argument is, well, if you just give lifetime warranty, they're going to break, and you're going to give them a free tool for the rest of their life. Where's the money? Well, they're they're gonna come back again because you they guarantee you guarantee your product. Stand behind you know? your product. So yeah. if you keep coming out with something new, a new socket set or a new drill or a new press, and it's got a name behind it that I can trust, I'm gonna keep coming back. I'm gonna keep coming back time and time again because I know that you stand behind your product 
and you're giving me something new, something quality, something exciting. That 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 is the same as the dispo. If the dispo is going to hand out a Mister Grow it, how to grow? They're concerned about, about you me taking care of you as a customer. Taking care <laughs> of me. See that that's a great point though, because it's like essentially the customer service is what's selling them, taking care of them, and being a look great at AC bit. Infinity, literally, dude. And and like, the, everyone's trying to do what they're doing, but they're not. Man. They're not taking yeah. care of our community. They're not taking care of the customer. They're not taking care of the creators. But not, that's making them shine, and it's not a direct ROI. It's a. It's basically that no it's like the exact and trust. Opposite. It's not yeah. an ROI in it's building good terms. Will, bro. It's building right. It's good ROI will. in terms of uh, uh, spread, awareness, yeah. name branding, uh, marketing. Like they are exploding. But then, in the effect of that, is becomes the market domination, it, it, and it's that's a trickle. What, it happens. If you've got Inevitable. good dispensaries that provide you the great flour for those who don't want to grow it. You've got the cuts available for those who do want to grow it. And like, can I try it? Oh, I could try it. This is the cut right here. Might not even like it. Wow. Or, or like that, th that would be so amazing to me if I have five cuts of this is one of this, this is one of this, this is one of this, and it's all available flower right there. And I know how they grew it and everything. That's and insane. We all know like it that. takes more than a couple of weeks to grow good herb. Well, we also so, know that you may not have the automation, the same nutrient uh, inputs, the same lighting power that the place does too. So you may get a different experience. So it's really not even a threat for them. No. Potentially. And, and you've got four months, yeah, months ahead of, of, you of growing months this and harvesting yeah. it. So where are you going to get your supply until then? Yeah. And who says it works out the first time? Fuck, and now I just love that whole, I got to come out to Colorado because like that, that's such a cool premise, though, because it's like I, I'll go to a dispo sometimes before I get some beans because I want to try it out. And it's not that phenotype. I know it's not. But it gives me an idea if I'm like, all right, well, the Georgia pie, I at least know that this one was hot, so I could potentially find one. Mm. But if the flavor is not even in my wheelhouse and it's some, some orangey, lemony something, I'm going to be like, I'm staying away from you. Yeah. You know? I do want to say, though, like, you know, you guys touched on it earlier, like, we're grows. We're like a rare breed almost because a lot of people out here, like, tons of people, guys, smoke. Not everyone's growing. Like, my wife and all, she loves smoking. She ain't growing a plant for She's not interested in, <laughs> in educational content about plants. Like, it's just not appealing to her. So even when I, and I think it's like it switches a little bit, too, because, like, my audience is, like, they're all growers. So I'll do a video on, like, how to get higher faster or how to come down from a high or something like that. And they're just not interested in that, bro. They know they, but other people on other channels will do that, and they're just content creators, not growing content creators. Consumer, and they just, yeah. Yeah. Consumer it creators. goes off. Yeah, so the consumerism part of it, I think, like, I'm a consumer and a grower. A lot of people just want to consume and they have no interest in growing. And that's okay. And that's yeah. fine. That's, that's absolutely, absolutely fine. Absolutely. Such a good observation, though, because, like, just like you were saying, like, like shout out Adam Mill. Like, he's one who's, like, champions the growers because, like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. But y'all, shout Yola out to you guys grow. who do it, man. And you guys make it happen. Respect. Major the, respect. Like, yeah. The Big real respect, kind of bro, are yeah. like, wait, you were the pheno hunter? Wait, you were the breeder? You brought wait, this to my you were table? the grower? Yeah. Like, Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's like the chef coming out to, you know. Yeah. It's like, you did this? Showing, like, literally. So I think man, we're very unique in that sense. You know, we don't just smoke. We also grow it and teach others how to, you know, be able to do it at home as well. Because, like, I love Yola. Dope is Yola. Great guy. But he doesn't grow a whole lot either, you know. But you don't know one of the grow. biggest can cannabis content creators out there. You know, and I think that he doesn't. That he had the, he was promoting the Hey Abby, wasn't he? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah we did a video on that. Did you see him next to that? And that comes the money. And then that's what I said in my video on, on the review of Hey Abby. Like he's a great, uh, great guy, but he doesn't grow a whole lot. Like he smoked. Yeah. Grows, Actually, in so. fairness, up until Rob, I didn't see a single one of the people that they had had on them that was that could grow. Yeah. Well, I can't teach. I, I was on you got it, one too. Before oh, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah so before yeah. me. Oh, I, I had oh, done okay, okay. I, I thought that was after. Before, um, the algorithm shared it with me after I put after I looked it up initially, and then all of a sudden I'm like, "What yeah. the, f the homie had it? Yeah. Oh, I would I have re let him reached out to you. Yeah. That was a not a good experience for me, but that it's a prime example though of like the ease of use, the the readily available thing, and I think that's for me the the attraction of Colorado. It's never been a gatekeeper state. Yeah. It's been they want to put you on game. They want to bring you in type of thing. Not that Cali's that way, but the commercialized Cali side is that way where it's like us growers or us growers, we're rolling our pack. We're the growers. Uh, yeah, the legacy, legacy, yeah. legacy market, <laughs> legacy. Most of them ain't pushed to pack in their damn life besides yeah. to their dorky friend's dad. Like We got to say shout out to the real ones. The, the real, real ones because there's a lot of that them. path, you know, and there's, there's a lot of them. Well, and they they made awesome it so, fronters too. Well, they made it so people like us in Michigan, like myself in Michigan, were able to try a Colorado pack or yeah. try a Cali pack and be like, oh, what is this? And because it was some unique, passionate grower. Like, again, with Eric and... Outdoor? Dude. Remember we were at MJ BizCon? 
and we ran into Eric Nugshots. Yeah, and, and um, he he was the photographer that did the higher Terpicam, book. Terpicam, shout out Terpicam. Shout and, out. And, and yeah, Terpicam, like Terpicam, two boy. I, I was so humbled, bro, on this outdoor, sun grown, just incredible fire. fire. It was Some the, of the it was best the best smoke, period, dude. Period. Stuff, like, yeah. and this is where I think the difference is 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 you don't know until you experience it. I hear the same thing, Oregon, sun grown. I hear the same mm. thing, even Colorado homegrown, because like the love put into it. Yeah. But I th- do think it's because it's that community based spirit that has kept going and since like the seventies, sixties, just keeps yeah. going and going. Yeah, you know. So big respect for taking the leap to go out to that area because that's I look at that as one of the meccas. It's it's California, Colorado, Washington, Michigan, and it's it, Oregon. It's spreading more and more. But yeah. I really feel in Nevada even. But I feel like that's more consumer side, but. We've got a lot less of those hybridized grower, consumer. Colorado is one of the first educators. places to legalize too. I think in the U.S. Right? If I'm not oh, mistaken. Oh yeah, yeah, yep, yep. And that was a big part that played into my decision making too. So I was like, yeah, we got to. They've been doing it a long time. Let's go out there, boy. Yeah, man, and it's, it's the difference with a lot of areas too. I think that's one op- like an open arm state. A lot of people I know migrate to Colorado from Michigan. Yeah, and they they never come back. It's I like the that. festivals, the lifestyle, the people. The, the somewhat hippie culture that still remains, I think that's something that keeps it alive. And it's like you could see a lot of states imitate the programs for medical or recreational or their style, like P was saying, like that culture spreads more. And I think that's one that's not talked about as much is the Colorado culture versus Cali. Yeah. Cali's always the, the top one. Cali's so. always on the map, yeah. Cali's the first one that people think of and shit too. Mm. Yeah. So. I think overall, uh, we're gonna have to come visit you. We already got an invite from Scotty. We're gonna yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. more than welcome. Let's come and chop it up in the studio. Dude, Dude Gross Cup. Gross Cup. DGC what do you think? Cup next year. Are you guys gonna go to DGC Cup next we're year? We're yeah, yeah. Hit me up, yeah, man. I stay out in Denver. And Good. I'm staying at your place. Yeah, yep. staying no more. I got, I got a room for I'm you. I'm staying bro. in the Hay Abbey, so let's room. get it. <laughs> uh, Chris, you can fit anyway, in the Hay Abbey. Anyway, it's got enough it's space. It's gonna be cold and wet. It's funny. It'll be awesome. Well, where can people find you, man? Where's uh? Where can we find Matt? Uh, hit me up on I can THC on YouTube. Just type that in; it'll come up. I can THC on Instagram; it'll come up. Um, you talking loud podcast wherever you guys get your podcast episodes. Apple we Podcast, all Spotify, oh, yeah. all that. All you guys are on mm-hmm. it. Yeah, and all you guys need to come back on again. We should do like another Love episode. Yeah, man. Yeah. Maybe, Love maybe when we all pull up on you. Yeah, that'd be yeah. Dope. Can, I was just about to say we should do like an in person one uh, when you guys come over yeah. to DGC Cup, hang out in the I Can Studio. Get Bro, I can do it. I can yeah. smoke with you. Let's yes, do it. Smoke we indoors can. And too. So yes. man, that's why Chris gets super high. <laughs> <laughs> that's so the elevation, man. I'm telling you. That's that's it's it's not the Twitter. Twitter Wait till you come to Canada, boy. Sea <laughs> <So, laughs> C- C- level Chris is in my different. studio, too. Sea <laughs> level Chris can smoke. <laughs> yeah. totally have some good home going you guys some blunts for rob yeah, hell yeah great, man. man matt seriously brother this was a hell of a conversation yeah. only yeah, a few yeah. o- only guys. a few have come back for episode two Dude. so to have you and back for episode that, two. like i could truly say this is the homie right here we yeah, have had bro. made some memories now and uh i'm excited to do some out in colorado man oh yeah it's that's how i feel you guys are my homies and like it, it's it's gonna be that way forevermore yeah, <laughs> so yeah, much man. man make sure you guys go check out i can thc on all the platforms you already know where it's at this guy's the uh, on behalf of myself from the stash i can thc you guys have yourself a fantastic day we're out of here yeah boys peace oh, oh that was great okay, yeah.